Yo, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to Theme Deck Tuesday. As you can tell in the title of this video, we're having another look at the Leaf Charge deck. Since I did recently do a re-review and a kind of re-look at a theme deck that I've looked at before, I thought I'd do it for Leaf Charge as well, since I did recently get a comment from a subscriber by the name of Phoenix asking if this deck was still viable and if it was any good, so that kind of spurred me on to come on here and have a look at it again. Of course, if you're not already subscribed, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and as well as that, leave a comment with any deck suggestions that you have for the future, any decks that you want to see revisited or any old decks that I've not looked at before that could have potential, although at this point I think I have looked at most of the good decks that are potentially viable in this format. Uh, it's really just a case of having fun here and trying to keep the format going as long as possible. Of course, give the video a like if you enjoy it at any point as well, that always helps me out. But I certainly don't have high hopes for this deck, I have to say. We're not looking too hot and we are up against a fire deck, which doesn't help us when we are weak to fire with pr pretty much half of the deck here. We do have a couple of uh, decent cards, I would say. We do have the lantern here, which we can make use of, which is pretty good. We can use the attack to deal 70 damage, I believe, and then we can discard all energy to deal 140, which is going to be necessary to take out this Houndoom, which is a little annoying, as we did have the knockout if they didn't have the Houndoom there, but the other downside to that is they are going to be able to use the Houndoom to search out cards from their deck with that nasty plot attack there. Very powerful attack for getting set up in the theme format, for sure. My opponent are just kind of taking their time to decide what they want to do here, but it looks like they're going for a Pokemon fan club, but once it actually loads up here, we can see they can get two basic Pokemon, and they are going to get a Hound Dower and a Entei, which makes a lot of sense to me, Entei being the primary attacker within their deck, I mean it's on the box art there. Um, but yeah, let, let me know guys, have you been playing Pokemon Trading Card Game Live? Has anyone else made the transfer over to that? Uh, during the beta here, of course, there's plenty of workarounds to have access to it. You don't have to be in Canada, but I personally, like I mentioned in my previous Theme Night video, going to be holding off on transferring over to there. Don't want to be jumping the gun, and honestly, the game doesn't look all that great at the moment. It looks a bit of a mess, so I'm going to hold off on playing that as much as possible. My opponent retreating here, rather than using Nasty Plot, I'm not quite sure what their thinking is. We can easily just go for the knockout, but there's not really a lot of uh, a lot of threat from my opponent, so I'm quite happy to use a Kikui here just to draw a couple of extra cards, and we won't discard our energy. I'm quite happy just to two hit the Entei here and take a knockout that way, and we do at least get into a couple of supporter cards off of the Professor Kikui. So it really does pay off there digging a little bit deeper into the deck. Damage isn't all that relevant, but we really do need to find some more basic Pokemon that we can work with, and hopefully we can get going from there. My opponent looking to have a pretty slow start as well, so I suppose we, despite the fact they're weak to fire, I think this is a fairly reasonable matchup, and it's quite fair, as we are both going to be quite slow, but Okay, my opponent's switching with Tate and Lisa rather than drawing cards, uh, so they go into a different Entei so that we can hit that instead. Very unusual tactics from my opponent, I have to say, but we do get a Dunsparce, which is pretty good. Get a Nest Ball as well. Shame we don't get any energies for the Dunsparce, that is a little unfortunate. Now, do we want to start going for a Sceptile? That is the question. That could be quite useful. We do have Orangaroo in the deck as well, which is nice. But, I mean, we do have a Sceptile, or a couple of Sceptile in our hand. We just don't have everything that we need to get up to it. So, a little bit reluctant to get that, I have to say. But, I think we could go for the Electric and uh, go for that instead as we can start accelerating energy that way and of course it's another lightning pokemon so we're not going to get hit for weakness we will once again not discard our energy the Entei is stuck here unless they have a switching card so i'm quite happy just to do that the one energy one grass energy is not going to be a huge threat since they do need a fire there in order to attack and they won't be doing a huge amount of damage the 20 plus burn 
Of course, burn is guaranteed, so it's doing a base of 40, which is reasonable in all fairness, but we will be able to get, take a knockout once they've used their attack. My opponent pulling off a copycat, pretty good for them. Get a nice big hand now in order to work with going forward here. And they're just probably going to be looking to attack at this point. There's not a lot else that they can really play out now that they've attached energy. They do get a nest ball though on their end as well. So that's going to allow them to get a basic Pokemon out of the deck. Or in this case, it is a blank green card. Now, of course, that has a loaded in. It's going to be a Heracross, but, oh uh, man, the, the game has been so old at this point. It's just really, really don't understand how they can't even get cards to load in, but... There we go. Well, Evolve, this is a great Pokemon here, the Minetric. You can deal 40 damage and then you get to attach two basic energies. It's really, really fantastic energy acceleration in this format, especially if you can get it down early enough. I think we'll go potentially for a Kukui. It could be relevant um, to try and draw some cards here, I think. Get some energy on the board. That's mainly what I'm looking for. Just a couple of extra energy and we do indeed find that so that's excellent we can attach that somewhere either to the Dunsparce um, I think the Minetric yeah it does indeed need a lightning energy so not super helpful there the Lantern does have a hefty 2 retreat cost so don't really want to be retreating I think we'll go for a Ultra Ball we can discard the Obama Snow what else do we want to discard probably just this other Minetric or even the grass, but yeah, just the Minetric, I think. Get that energy attached onto the board and have that in play. Let's get down a... Start getting the set tile down, I think. That's going to be a good shout overall, as it can be a reasonable attacker. So we'll go with that, attach to the Dunsparce, and we can get the knockout with our Lantern. No need to discard energy, of course, as we're definitely getting the knockout. And we finally take a prize card, getting that lightning is excellent. We'll be able to use Minetric to start accelerating a bunch of energy from the deck. I believe it is from the deck, I really hope it's not from your hand, but okay. Apparently it is indeed from your hand, which is a little unfortunate. Really hope that that was from the deck, as that would have been so much more powerful. And I know that's something that the Rillaboom deck has, it has the Eldegoss, allows you to search out energy from the deck, but... Yeah, Minetric, at least you are dealing damage. I'll give it that much. The 40 damage can be quite relevant, especially for low HP Pokemon or Pokemon in this situation where we can finish off something like an Entei. My opponent did fail their Timer Ball, which is nice to see, but they are getting a, a Rescue Stretcher to get an Entei back. Uh, Professor Kukui on their end, really looking for energy, I reckon. Timer Ball again, they do get two heads, that's going to balance it out. Of course, the probability definitely working in their favour. And that's going to get them a couple of evolutions, of course. That's the whole point of the card, but that is going to allow them to work towards a Blaziken here. Really nice setup, finally getting going from my opponent, but no energy once again, so they're not able to do a huge amount here. And we can just continue to build up our board, attach energy where we can. And we'll get a knockout once again with a real lantern. Dealing with that 70 damage is all we need to take a second prize card in this match. We're going to be picking up another electric. Perhaps I shouldn't have discarded the minetric, but that's all right. I'm sure we have ways. I think we have rescue stretcher in this deck as well. Honestly, been a while since I played the leaf charge deck, and I didn't really check the deck <laughs> the deck list beforehand. Which you probably should do, but that's alright. I know the basic uh, premise of the deck, and that's really all that matters, because you're going to be drawing so slowly in this format anyways, it's not really a big deal. But going back to the game here, we see my opponent does get the Blaziken. That's going to allow them to start accelerating energy out of their discard pile and onto their board, which is going to be great for them. We'll get our Sceptile in play though, and uh, we can start putting some other Pokemon in play I suppose this electric is going to need some lightning energy so we might as well attach that and do we want to discard all of this energy in order to guarantee a knockout honestly it could be useful but at the same time my opponent is kind of stuck here they could attach an energy nasty plot which I'm not too worried about so I think we'll just go for the 70 damage for the time being 
the issue with discarding our energy for the big attack is we have to discard all up lightning energy and that's going to result in us not getting an attack on the following turn in order to follow up with a knockout so I'd much rather continuously deal 70 damage and keep pressure on my opponent that way yeah it is giving them slightly more turns but they're not really doing a lot they're not actually dealing a huge amount of damage to us and so that's perfectly fine just give them these extra turns to build up we do pick up another electric that is not what we're looking for here we really do not need another one and it only requires one energy so don't really want to be attaching there um, I suppose we could attach onto Dunsparce I suppose in case we want to retreat it or something uh, not quite sure but essentially I just want energy in play so that the Sceptile can do as much damage as possible since it is based on the, dam the energy that we have in play it increases damage based on that so just attaching energy for the point of building up a big attack with Sceptile as I say, we do get a knockout here, it's going down to three prize cards. We are picking up a How, which is much needed, but my opponent is going to be able to attack with this Heracross. Dealing a nice 120 if they have a Stage 2 Pokemon in play, which they do indeed have, as they've got that Blaziken on the bench to continually keep that energy in play at least. And they'll be able to come in with the Heracross here, taking a knockout on a Lantern. And the question is, what do we go in with? We could potentially go in with the Dunsparce, I think. Probably the best option. Does the Oh yeah, this has a free retreat, so we could just go in with the Manetric as well and free retreat out that way rather than wasting energy on the Dunsparce. So we'll go in with that. And we do pick up another Chincha, which is quite nice. So let's go with the Cow first of all. Picking up two Grass Energy is pretty good here, I have to say. Um, we could accelerate those with the Manetric, although the Sceptile is dealing 20 times the amount of energy attached to all of our Pokemon. So we're doing a total of 60, 80 damage right now. If we attach an energy, that's going to take us up to 100. Unfortunately, the Hierocross does have 120 hit points. So a little bit out of our range. I think we'll go into the Dunsparce for the time being and make use of that while we can. We can still accelerate this energy onto the Sceptile though, and as I say, we'll deal 10 damage and hope that we get the heads on Paralysis. Ah, oh, that sucks. Tails, no Paralysis. My opponent is going to be able to take a knockout, and we'll have to see what we can make happen from here. A little unfortunate that the um, Sceptile is 20 times. If it was 20 plus... Um, 20 plus 20 for each energy rather than 20 for each energy um, that would have been better that would have allowed us to get the knockout and we would have been in a nice spot going forward but at the same time my opponent does have a lot of fire attackers so as soon as we put up a receptile it is going to be able to get knocked out fairly easily my opponent does also have the McCargo as well which is going to allow them to use that smooth over ability getting a card from their deck and putting it on top of their deck which gives them that guaranteed consistency every single turn to make sure that they get exactly what they want out of the deck. Let's promote this Minetric then once again since it does have the free retreat and we do pick up a rescue stretcher which is quite nice we could get back a Minetric we could get the lantern both of these are good options here for sure the other option, of course, getting a, bo uh, a three, a selection of three Pokemon back into the deck, which could be quite useful, potentially getting the Manetric, something along those lines. Um, I think we kind of want the Pokemon available right now, though, so I'm going to Rescue Stretcher for the one and just get the Lantern, because that way it does have that XP share type ability, keeping energy in play. So we'll go with that, and we can also attach energy onto the lantern I suppose and we'll just go for the copycat shuffle our hand in try and get five decent cards doesn't look like that's going to be the case but we do have Manetric to accelerate a bunch of energy I suppose not got a lot of other options so we'll go with this and attach two of these grass energy um, not a great a lot not a good amount of choice but I suppose we'll put one on Sceptile Oh, okay, two on Sceptile, I suppose we don't get a choice. They both have to go on to the one Pokemon. So now we have a Sceptile with three Grass Energy when it only needs one to actually attack. 
but that's fine. As I say, we need lots of energy in order to deal lots of damage with that guy. And we do at least have the Lily as well, so now that we have a smaller hand, the Lily is going to come in useful. Here comes the smooth over from the cargo. As I said, they're going to be looking to get that used every single turn to guarantee cards that they need. For the most part, it's just going to be things like items and supporters, but sometimes you might want energy as well, if you're lacking energy. Here's a lolly, so they can actually draw into the card this turn. Not quite sure what it's going to be, but they're not going to make, make use of it anyway, as they're just going to be attacking us. And here we go, the lantern coming in clutch here, getting the energy to stay in play, which is excellent. And my opponent does have a total of 50 damage on them, so we'll have to try and decide what we want to promote here. Potentially just the lantern, I think. We don't have a lot of other options, so I think we'll promote the lantern. Hope that we draw into a lightning energy, and can I take it from there? Let's go for the lily. Ah, that sucks. No lightning energy. So we're kind of stuck now. Ah, we could retreat, I suppose, and get a knockout that way, but... Yeah, that really, really unfortunate and sucks quite a lot. Um, let's attach a grass. Uh, we can at least get the knockout here, but we're not going to be in a good spot. Our septile is going to go down quite easily to any of my Poke my opponent's Pokemon's attacks. Pick up another grass energy off the prizes. Yeah, I would much prefer if this deck was a lot more focused on lightning stuff. I mean, that's pretty much how you use the deck anyway, just use the Sceptile as a backup and use the Lightning Pokemon as your main attackers, but yeah, we're just going to have to deal with my opponent getting an easy knockout here, and uh, we don't really have a lot of responses, there's nothing that we can really do about this. My opponent's going to be using the Blaziken, of course, keeping Fire Energy in play, something that you always want to do with that deck, and there we go, 260 damage, more than enough to get a knockout on every Sceptile. I suppose we can keep a Grass Energy in play, not that it's going to be relevant. And uh, we will promote our Electric. We do get a Lightning Energy, which is quite nice. And we do also have a Lady, which is going to allow us to search out energy from the deck. We'll just get a bunch of Lightning Energy so we can actually attack here. And I suppose we'll attack with our Electric, Electric, and use it for 20 damage. Not going to be super relevant. Perhaps if we still had Professor Kikui available, it would have been nice as it would take the Houndoom down to having 90 HP. And then if we had Professor Kikui, that would boost the attack on Lantern to deal 90 damage. So yeah, not a great spot to be in. As I say, we're going to be struggling now and my opponent has caught up in the prizes going down to two prizes on their end, so despite having a nice start, my opponent being really slow, and us taking the lead in prizes, my opponent has definitely brought it back into their favour, and that's really to be expected when they're playing a fire deck. I think if this had been any other fire deck as well, it would have been a lot easier for them, but uh, not quite sure why they're retreating here into a blaze again with no energy on it, not unless they have a switch card in their hand already and they're just looking to attack with something else. But, um, okay, they have a Guzma. So now they're bringing back up the Houndoom, so very unusual plays from my opponent, I have to say. This match is very confusing. Um, just the nature of some of these plays that they're making are very odd. But, hey, if it works for them, that's all that matters, because it's going to get them closer to winning. And we see a, uh, another smooth over from my opponent, so... If I had to guess, I would say that the Guzma is what they got from a smooth over previously. But they're not actually able to take a knockout on our Lantern. And so now it's just kind of stuck here in the active spot. It does give us an opportunity to go in with something like the Furfro here. Since it does deal the 20 damage that we're looking for. So we could go with that. Um, let's take Lisa. We can use this to switch. And we'll switch into the Furfro. Suppose we could have switched into the electric as well to deal 20 damage that way. But I'm kind of holding on to that in case we're able to get a um, manetric back into play and into our hand again at some point. That would be great for accelerating energy, but we'll see, we'll see. My opponent attaching energy here. 
not quite sure why they're choosing not to use something like the Ente that they've got. That would just completely clear through every board. The Heracross as well would be great for doing that. So very strange that they're, they're trying to use the Houndoom here. As that really requires a lot of cards in their hand. But they should have that now with the TV Reporter drawing them three. Well, essentially two cards um, since they are having to draw three cards and then discard one. And uh, we see a smooth over. Very strange they didn't smooth over before the TV reporter so they could actually guarantee whatever card they wanted. They're doing it after the fact, but hey ho, maybe they're getting set up for the following turn. Who knows? They're going to be looking to get a knockout here though, which they can indeed get with the attack dealing 130 since they do have more cards in their hand than us. My opponent congratulating us already, saying that we have a good deck, which is very nice of them. Thank you very much, opponent. Much appreciated. Going down to one prize card on both ends. Uh, I guess we'll just play out this hand. There's not much hope for this match anyway. And we can not discard that. We'll deal 70 damage since it's the precise number now. Getting rid of the Houndoom there. And we do pick up a Snover. A little bit late for you, Snover. Could have used you like five or six turns ago, but that's okay. It's going to be the end of the game anyways. As I said, my opponent just needs to promote the Ente and they will be able to win fairly easily here. I think they can even get a knockout with the uh, uh, Heracross as well. So yeah, either of those is a valid attacker right now. All they have to do is promote it and get the knockout. They will just need a energy and then they can also guarantee the energy with the Macargo there to make sure that they're dealing as much damage as possible. Village is going to be going through the motions and hope that they misclick, essentially. If they can misclick and just kind of throw their turn away, maybe they pass instead of attacking, and then it goes over to us. That would be the only chance that we have of winning the game here, but no. They do indeed attack and get the final knockout. Uh, we did at least get fairly close. I mean, we got down to one prize card, so I'll happily take that. It wasn't a bad match by any means, but just the way that it goes with the typing there so let's get into one more game with the leaf charge deck see if that one's any better and if we can get a win with it. Going into this one we're starting off with the Dunsparce which is the optimal starter of course going to allow us to get three basic Pokemon into play here which is excellent. We do also have a Guzma in our starting hand one of the few theme decks which actually has Guzma available to us which is nice essentially just the same as boss's orders if you're not familiar with Guzma but of course we do also have to switch our own Pokemon. We do have a lantern in our hand so definitely want to get the Chincho out here and um, potentially getting the Aranguru could be good it's just a good attacker as well with that psychic attack and I think we could also get the Minetric that could be a good option since we have Timer Ball so Let's go for the Electric here. It's going to be a hard matchup against the Zacian deck as a lot of the metal Pokemon are resistant to grass. It's going to be reducing damage by 30 so we're going to want a focus on our Lightning Pokemon here. Especially if my opponent does have things like Corviknight. I can't remember if this deck has the Corviknight line or if it's the Zamazenta deck. But one of them has it, and they're going to be weak to a lightning, so a good option here. Let's go for the lantern, get that into play. And I, can, I think we can timer ball here as well, see how that goes. Okay, nice one. We get two evolution Pokemon. That's excellent. That's going to get us our Manetric. And we can also get something else, so I suppose we can get the Grovile. Don't see why not. We could put this Nova in play, uh, I suppose it wouldn't hurt, and we could also go in with the Manetric, which has potential here. They do have a Nose Pass, it's not going to be doing a huge amount of damage, so I think we can go ahead and Guzma, that's going to allow us to bring up the Manetric, get that into play, and we can start accelerating some energy here while also doing damage. We could keep the Snover in our hand for the time being, I think. It's not going to be a huge demand for the ability on a bomb as no. So we'll just hold on to it. And we'll attach our grass. 
Let's put it on to the Oranguru. That seems reasonable. I'm going to go over to my opponent's turn. They won't be able to make use of the um, Hullitra here once again to shuffle in and draw, unless, of course, they get a switch card, which, of course, they do. Just my luck that they get that, and we'll get a Dan, but, okay, of course, they win the Rock, Paper, Scissors as well. So now they have a good couple of options here. They've drawn a lot of cards. Oh, a Pokemon Catcher. Forgot that that was available, but yeah, good job that we got a Tails on the Pokemon Catcher. Do not want anything else getting damaged here. We pick up a Lightning Energy, and I think we're going to be wanting to attach that onto the Lantern. We'll put down the Snover, just so that I can draw a card off of the Instruct with a Rangaroo, and we do get another Energy, which is fine, I guess. Not really what I was looking for, I was preferring a Supporter card, but that's alright, we'll pick it up. And accelerate this energy. Um, let's just put it onto the. Sure, we'll put it onto the Snover for the time being. I know the Obama Snow does have a reasonable attack. It's not amazing, but it could be useful. So, just spreading my energy across the board so that we have a good amount of options to work with. And of course, the Instruct on Orangaroo is going to allow us to keep drawing through the, essentially the top card of our deck as long as we can play it out. It's going to be the main thing. Let's see, we, though my opponents get the Probo Pass, that's going to be a big attacker right here. And of course, they're powering up the Zushin, which can deal a total of 120 damage, which is nothing to scoff at at all. We do pick up a supporter, which is excellent. Tate and Lisa is going to get us five fresh cards, and we get a couple of energy, which is very nice. We'll put down the Nest Ball, certainly be able to search out the Sceptile line now, since we have the Grover, Gro the Grover, the Grovile back in our hand. And let's get the Grass Energy down here, and we'll once again go for an attack, getting a knockout, and we can accelerate this energy. And I think picking it onto the Orang Root is fine. Like I said, that Psychic attack is also very powerful alongside the ability on there, so definitely need to look out to, to try and use that at some point. It is doing a total of 60 plus 20 for each energy on the defending Pokemon, so the total damage is going to be 120 against this Zacian, which is not too terrible. 120, though, of course, is going to be reduced if we try and hit it with a grass Pokemon, but a Rangaroo is not a grass Pokemon, it is colourless, so it's going to be fairly good. Going to get the knockout with the Orangaroo, which is what we want. And as I say, we're building up a nice board of Pokemon overall here. Actually, pick up a Lily, which is great. Um, I think we can put down the Electric and really maximise the amount of draw that we're getting. We could have also used the Instruct on Orangaroo, I suppose, but not really desperate to use that. We have no energy in the discard, so I want to hold on to the Abomas Snow for when we do have energy in there. And, of course, we have the Lightning that we can make use of. We want to attach that onto the potential, just the Snover. The Abomasnod does have fairly high attack cost, which is all colourless. So, we'll attach it there. And we'll go for the Psychic Attack. Getting the Retaliation Knockout on the opposing Zashian, which is awesome. It's going to keep us in the prize race. And we pick up another energy, which is great. My opponent bringing in the Proba Pass that we damaged earlier, and they are able to get a knockout as well, returning the 120 damage. But we are going to be in a fantastic spot here with our Lantern. They do only have a total of 140 HP, so we're going to be coming in here with our Lantern, discarding all of our energy and getting that knockout. So, surprisingly fast game. They are only lasted a few turns really, but we were able to get a bunch of great um, early game set up in terms of getting those evolutions into play. We had the Dunsparce to get set up, so really an ideal start for the Leaf Charge, and that is all you can really hope for in order to actually get that deck going and taking knockouts. So hopefully you enjoyed this one. I certainly did, since we were able to get that victory against a fairly modern deck compared to Leaf Charge anyway. So give the like, give a video a like if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.